Hello, I'm Constitutional Attorney Katherine Henry, and welcome to the Constitution Segment Recap for Season 2, Episode 12 of Restore Freedom Weekly. This week, we talked about preparing step-by-step -step for representing yourself basically the cliff notes on the logistics of it all. Keep in mind, this is just a simple recap. So to hear that full robust discussion of everything we talked about and seeing even more on-screen examples, check out that full episode, the link for which is on page two of this slideshow. And the link for the slideshow is in the description of today's segment. Again, we were talking about preparing step-by-step -step for representing yourself. I've been encouraging people for years to properly educate themselves so that they can represent themselves in court and in other situations. But other than knowing which laws might apply in which situations, how do you really put together a case to represent yourself? There's so many laws and court rules and other procedures that it can all be, quite frankly, overwhelming even for me. This week, I wanted to walk you through that entire process, the logistics of it, so you can see how step-by-step -step, to prepare for a case. Rolling right on in, and there's not too many, there's less than 20 here. Uh, step number one, you're going to comb through the U.S. and state constitutions. You're going to comb through all of your state laws. Yes, you're going to look at every single chapter, looking at that chapter index, whether you're in Michigan, Florida, or some other state. We've talked about this in weeks past on how to identify that. But you're going to comb through that entire index and expand as many sections as you can to see if there's any re possibly relevant parts or laws in your state's laws um, that would relate to your case. Uh, you're going to look for all the court rules. And if anything has to do with any kind of municipal uh, regulations or even municipal protection of your rights, um, you want to include all those city ordinances or, or township or county or whatever uh, regulations as well. You want to, step number two, print all even possibly relevant ones. Okay, so all of the parts of your U.S. and state constitutions, all of the possibly relevant statutes, court rules, city ordinances, print them all. Now, for the chapters, or for, excuse me, for court rules, any parts that are relevant to what you're doing, you need to print the whole chapter. I'm not sure about every single state, but I could tell you in Minnesota, Michigan, Florida, the states that I've, I've been a resident in or practiced law in, the court rules are broken down typically in about nine or so chapters, and each one is typically on a topic that you'll be able to recognize if you think it would relate to you. So is it civil or criminal? Uh, there's generally a, a, a chapter on general court rules and procedures, which would apply in all cases. Um, you might need to know what your appellate procedures are. That's typically a chapter in and of itself. Chapter 7 in uh, Michigan, Chapter 9 in Florida, for example. So if any part of that chapter is relevant, print the entire chapter because you're going to end up needing more of that chapter as your case unfolds, even though it might not, uh, you might not realize that now. Number three, highlight all seemingly relevant parts in every court rule that you have printed. Literally all the court rules and procedures and, uh, and and statutes and whatnot and parts of the constitution that you have printed highlight every single piece that you think might be relevant to your case highlight actual sharpie yes uh use sticky tabs just like these little guys right here you know the colorful ones in fact if you're able to be organized enough about it as you go through them put a different colored tab on there for different main topics so if you have more of a due process kind of thing going on and then you have say eminent domain is another topic um, then, uh, you know, it's you know, it'll be easier on yourself later on if you if you can categorize those tabs using colors now. But if not, at least throw a tab on there to indicate that. So when you go through the possibly hundreds of pages later, you have things tabbed. Number four, compile a list uh, and categorize your main topics. Now, uh, see the full episode for the example where I did an actual screen share and, and I showed my actual, it's a handwritten uh, list of my main topics, but generally it was uh, this list right here. It's just on a yellow pad. I have different uh, statutes and court rules and court procedures, um, uh, parts of the Constitution, and they're just in topics. Uh, eminent domain, unreasonable searches and seizures, how the state protects private property rights, uh, um, due process issues. And so I have them written down the main, the main things into the main topics to help organize my thoughts and uh, organize the, the laws and the rules as I completed this process. Number five, go back through all, everything you have highlighted. Yes, this may take days or weeks. 
It's a process, but I'm telling you how to do it and how to do it right. Go back through all of those laws and court rules that you have already highlighted to identify and start listing all the documents that will be needed. So you're gonna end up having a proof of service for sure, or certificate of service, whatever your jurisdiction calls it. Um, you might need a motion or a notice of hearing, or maybe a notice or claim of appeal. You might need a brief, um, a notice of joinder. Uh, if you're trying to bring in, you know, if somebody's suing you and then you wanna sue them back, uh, you might have a counterclaim. Uh, so whatever documents that your statutes and your court rules uh, tell you that you're going to need, uh, make sure to start writing a list of those. Now you can see an example here in uh, basically the red writing is all of this and then had to start on a second page here of all the documents that need to be drafted in a situation I've been working on, um, then it just gives you an example. You know, you have a brief, you have a certificate of service, a petition, a, a reply brief will come later on down the road, an index of the record, um, a motion for stay. And, um, and so basically just identifying each of those documents. Number six, create a timeline of the requirements and separate out what's needed now um, for example, for me, the example of what I just filed, which is in um, a, a gray slide later on and in a few more slides, you'll be able to see the two sets of, of, of documents I filed with the court just last week. But for all of these documents, um, you can see the yellow highlighted ones. I highlighted the ones yellow that needed to be done now versus just something that may need to be done later on. Number seven, review all of your highlighted tabs and parts of your, your statutes and your court rules and things for the ones that are relevant to the documents that need to be done now and uh, create an outline of each main document that you're going to need. So if it's a motion or a brief or your petition or your complaint, uh, those would be examples of your main documents where you have to tell the meat of what you're doing there. And for each one of those main documents, you may only have one, but if you have multiple ones, each for each one, uh, create an outline and save those notices and the service documents for later on in this process, okay? So your notice of hearing or your notice of appeal, those are simple, typically one page documents that you don't go into the, the meat of the discussion, so save those for later. Step number nine, review each of your highlighted or tabbed parts to fill in your outline, and that will help you then create your rough draft. So just take it one step at a time, so one motion at a time or one document at a time. Number 10, revise to ensure that you're accurately quoting the statutes, court rules, and what, ha what have you. Um, I made sure to do that after I had my rough draft. As I was typing everything in for final draft, I was making sure to reference and relook at each of those statutes uh, from my notes to make sure that I was getting everything good and, and not taking it out of context. Number 11, double check procedural requirements, your page limits or word limits, your signature requirements, the formatting. Number 12, repeat steps 9 through 11 for all of your other main documents. Just try to take them one at a time. Again, that's your motions, your briefs, maybe an application for leave to appeal. Number 13, have someone or two or three someones proofread your grammar, punctuation, spelling, word choice, readability, understandability. Don't just leave it to the computer programs to help you with that. Number 14, draft uh, your proof or certificate of service your notices of hearing or notice of appeal, basically your, your certificates and your notices. Uh, all those procedural things that are typically one page long or so, uh, go ahead and draft those at this point. Number 15, have someone or two or three people proofread those while you double check your procedural rules to make sure you're doing everything the way you're supposed to. Number 16, make sure all of the documents that you need to do are done. And 17, make sure to file those documents, which in most states by now is gonna be done through some sort of e-filing. Number 18, make sure that you are serving all the documents on all the right people through the right procedures, which is gonna be mostly talked about in your state's court rules. It might be by e-filing, by email, by certified mail, personal service. Uh, so check your court rules, but make sure you're serving all the documents. Why is all of this important for you to know? Well, number one, no one is going to fight harder for your rights than you. Number two, paying a competent attorney, even a low hourly rate, would still be quite costly because this is a lot of work. Number three, even the good attorneys likely don't have the time, staffing, or resources to put this much effort into getting it done 
right. Now, I referenced those documents that I filed on Friday in the City of Ormond Beach case, so you can take a look at those here. And if you're interested in helping in that case, helping to pay for the transcript costs or court filing fees or anything, please click on that Give, Send, Go link that I have on this page as well. The video here is a, about a three-minute video that just explains the case a little bit more in case you don't know much about it at this point. And if you want more information, check out that full episode on Tuesday, the Wednesday Way to Get Involved Challenge, or the Freedom Fighting Tools from Friday. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and share. Restore freedom.